Day 715 of the Trump administration. Tomorrow begins week three of this government shutdown. Today brought what the White House likely viewed as good and worrisome news. First, the good stocks surged nearly 750 points after taking a dive yesterday. That bounce back came after a robust jobs report, over 300,000 jobs added in December. There was also a new and potentially ominous development, however, in the Mueller investigation. More on that just ahead. We begin here tonight with this ongoing yet still urgent shutdown and the breathtaking reporting from the Washington Post tonight saying the White House may have been cavalier about a shutdown because they didn't fully understand what it entailed. And we quote, the Trump administration, which had not anticipated a long-term shutdown, recognized only this week the breadth of the potential impact, several senior administration officials said. The officials said they were focused now on understanding the scope of the consequences and determining whether there is anything they can do to intervene. The president met with Democratic congressional leaders again today. He's holding firm on his demand for $5 billion for his wall. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi described it as, quote, contentious. Tonight, the Wall Street Journal described it this way, also breathtaking. Mr. Trump opened Friday's meeting with lawmakers with a 15-minute profanity-laced rant about impeachment, according to people familiar with the meeting. Mr. Trump also told lawmakers he didn't like the word shutdown and preferred the word strike, one of the people said. That, of course, would be the opposite of a strike, where workers choose to walk off the job. At any rate, the after-action reports on the meeting didn't offer a lot of hope. We told the president we needed the government open. He resisted. In fact, he said he'd keep the government closed for a very long period of time, months or even years. I did where say we are. That. Absolutely, I said that. I don't think it will, but I am prepared. I'm very proud of doing what I'm doing. I don't call it a shutdown. I call it doing what you have to do for the benefit and for the safety of our country. So you can call it whatever you want. You can call it the Schumer or the Pelosi or the Trump shutdown. Doesn't make any difference to me. Just words. Uh, have you considered using emergency powers to grant yourself authorities to build this wall without congressional approval? And second, yes, on I Mexico. Have. We can call a national emergency because of the security of our country. Absolutely. No, we can do it. That last part, declaring a national emergency to build the wall, got everybody's attention late today. Tonight, our NBC News colleague Julia Ainsley reports that, according to two sources, Trump administration lawyers are already meeting to figure out if the president can, in fact, do this. Earlier on this network, longtime Republican commentator Charlie Sykes raised the alarm precisely about this. This idea that he might invoke a national emergency yeah. powers, this should be a fire bell in the night in terms of constitutional <clears throat> division of power. As for the Democrats, while they continue to insist the president will get no money for the wall, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi seemed to hint at least of movement on some of her party's demands. Did you make any progress on a dollar figure for what the no. president wants or what you all want from him? How do you define progress in a meeting uh, when you have a, a under, better understanding of each other's position, when you eliminate some possibilities? If that's a judgment, then that's, we made some progress. So there's that. Remember, as these talks continue, there are some 800,000 federal workers left in limbo. Eighty percent of these folks work outside Washington. Their next scheduled payday, January 11th, and unless there's a deal this weekend, not looking lightly, then it will very likely not mean, uh, it mean they will not get their paychecks. But today we learned from the Washington Post that senior officials in the Trump administration are to start getting $10,000 raises. This afternoon, the president was asked about these raises. The $10,000 raise that your cabinet members and senior administration officials are due to receive starting tomorrow. Will you ask them not to accept that, at least during the shutdown itself? Well, I might consider that. You know, that's something I may consider. After today's Rose Garden event, Vice President Mike Pence said he won't accept the increase during the shutdown. Meantime, furloughed federal employees waiting to go back to work 
are now left to figure out how to cover their family expenses. Even some government workers who supported the president say they're having second thoughts about his determination to hold out for that wall. If this did not affect my household directly, I would tell him to stand, to stand tall because something needs to be done. But since it does affect me, and again, we're talking uh, myself and my wife are government employees, so therefore, if this, does, if this continues, we will not have a paycheck. But I can definitely understand where Donald Trump is coming from. While citing nothing specific, the president insists federal workers are behind him and share his views about the border. Those workers have said to me and communicated, stay out until you get the funding for the wall. These federal workers want the wall. A lot of people are looking to get their paycheck. We are not giving up. We have to have border security. Do you have in mind a safety net for those who need their checks? Well, the safety net is going to be having a strong border. Many of the people you're discussing, I really believe that they agree with what we're doing. I want to understand how you expect federal workers to last that long without getting a paycheck. Look, if we have to stay out for a very long period of time, we're going to do that. And many of those people, maybe even most of those people, that really have not been and will not be getting their money in at this moment, those people in many cases are the biggest fan of what we're doing. As we reported here last night, the budget stalemate may be creating a fracture within the president's party as Republican senators worry now about the shutdown's political and personal damage. Today, one of those senators spoke out. I just want to be super clear here, though. I mean, are you calling to reopen the government now? And, yeah. and as if even if this wall issue isn't entirely solved yet, getting the government reopened now. Well, the reality is this. The Senate appropriations bill that had bipartisan support has the wall in it. Yes, let's get the government open. We can have a, a bigger fight for the rest of the funding anyway. That was kind of going to happen whether or not you got $5 billion or more. I support getting the $5 billion. I support getting more. But let's get the government open. Senator Gardner interviewed by the extremely tall Garrett Hake on Capitol Hill. Let's bring in our leadoff panel on a Friday night. Jonathan Allen, NBC News national political reporter, also happens to be co-author of Shattered, the story of the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign. Jill Colvin, White House reporter for the Associated Press. And Josh Gerstein, senior legal affairs contributor for Politico. Welcome to you all, Jill. Let me take you to the Rose Garden event this afternoon. Do they seem, the, this is the White House writ large, to understand either the actual gravity of this going on too long or even just the superficial optics, the damage of this going on for too long? No, at this point, it really doesn't seem like they do. The president still believes that this is a winning issue for him. And you saw him standing out there, you know, twice in the last two days. We've had the president make semi-surprise appearances yesterday in the White House briefing room, uh, today coming out and delivering this uh, Rose Garden press conference after his meeting, uh, really trying to kind of double down, making clear that he has no interest in this uh, cap wrapping up anytime soon, confirming, in fact, that he'd said that this could last for days, months, even years, uh, and digging in still on this demand for his border wall money. Uh, the president has tried to make the case again and again and again that this money is necessary for border security. Clearly, Democrats are not willing to budge at all. And the president still, though, feels like this is a winning issue with his base. He's had so much pressure, so much feedback from people on the right, you know, the talk radio people, uh, folks who worked on his campaign, who keep telling him that this is the way to go. And you've got other people, though, in the White House who are looking at this and saying, well, look, what is the off-ramp here at some point? This can't go on forever, and what are we going to do? And that's why you've seen uh, discussion popping up over the last 24 hours or so, talking about potentially including DACA in some type of mm -hmm. fix. You had, again, discussion today about using the this emergency declaration that we've heard the president now. I mean, it's been months that he has been floating this idea even during the midterms. We heard him talk like that uh, when he, for instance, deployed uh, the military down to the border there. So they're just trying to figure out, trying to come up with potential off-ramps to end this. Uh, Josh, I don't know if folks have thought through the equation of upwards of 800,000 federal workers having to choose gasoline or health care starting roundabout next week. Uh, folks who, for no fault of their own, live paycheck to paycheck, as millions do. Is any party, is either side in this feeling more heat than the other? 
Well, I think that the White House will begin to feel more heat. I don't know right at the moment how, how much uh, heat there is. And the president keeps expressing this confidence that there are many, many federal employees that back his approach here. And it may be true that there are some. You just have to wonder, uh, as you say, Brian, as you go from week to week or possibly on to months, uh, certainly, there are very few people that could sustain a year or more without a paycheck. I don't see how the president can even remotely claim that. So uh, I think you will see the heat going up on both sides. And I did think, despite his bluster today, as Jill says, there were signs uh, that he was looking for a way out of this dispute, uh, whether it be through the emergency uh, declaration or uh, through some further neg negotiations and concessions uh, to Democrats that might be able to bring this to a close. I didn't think that he was as confrontational he'd been in maybe uh, as he'd been in some of those videos, for example, that uh, were produced by the White House a week or two ago. John, I want to play you something and we'll share it with our wider audience. Let's just call it the president's migrating remarks when describing this wall he wants. We're going to build a big, beautiful wall. A big, beautiful wall. The wall just got 10 feet taller. 10 feet taller. You got to be able to weave and bob. You don't have to go through a, a concrete wall when you can go over it or around it. Or you have to have see-through. You have to know what's on the other side of the wall. The barrier, wall, or steel slats, whatever you want to call it, it's all the same. We don't use the word wall necessarily. But it has to be something special to do the job. Steel is stronger than concrete. If I build this wall or fence or anything the Democrats need to call it, because I'm not into names, I'm into production. I'm into something that works. A see-through wall made out of steel is far stronger than a concrete wall. It actually will be a more powerful wall, and it will be a more beautiful wall than having a concrete wall. So, John, we've gone from uh, concrete to steel, wall to fence. Uh, uh, people are aware of this in real time. They have seen his comments change. They've seen the goalposts move on the part of this White House. Yeah, Brian, uh, I don't expect that the 2020 campaign chant is going to be build that concrete or steel or whatever the Democrats want to call it. Uh, his campaign chant has always been build that wall. I think he is looking for uh, an exit ramp, as Jill called it. If you look at what's going to happen with the federal government over time, if you actually shut it down for months or years, as he suggests, you're going to see an expansion of the shutdown. Right now, you're talking about several agencies. Uh, the rest of the agencies would run out of funding in September of this year. Uh, so at that point, you would see the Defense Department shut down among uh, those that are currently funded, which would sabotage his own wall efforts to circumvent uh, a deal on the wall, because the way that he's looking at drawing funds for it now is to transfer $4 billion uh, of Defense Department spending, which you can do under the law by declaring it in the national interest. The Defense Secretary has to do that. I think that's what he was talking about today. Uh, usually they get consent from congressional leaders. Historically, that's the way it's been done. It sounds like the White House is willing to steamroll Congress if the Democrats object to that. Uh, but what you would see is an expanding shutdown of the government. You would see things get much, much worse over time. So I think he's looking for an exit ramp, looking for perhaps a fig leaf, something that he can say is a wall or a concrete barrier or a steel reinforced concrete or something uh, to give his base. One point I want to make, though, about the federal workers, Brian, uh, living here in Washington, Washington, D.C., the highest concentration of federal workers in the country are in this area, in Montgomery County, Maryland, Prince George's County, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Arlington and Fairfax County in Virginia, and Alexandria, Virginia. And these are some of the most overwhelmingly Democratic parts of the country. Uh, the idea that federal workers are uh, supporting the president uh, in general is, uh, is one that is just not borne out by the numbers uh, politically. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.